welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Once again, if you're watching this early, then you are probably watching the replay. It usually takes a little bit for people to jump on and watch these videos. So welcome. I hope you're having a beautiful, wonderful day. And um, I hope that you really just start your day with positivity. If you're watching this at the beginning of your day, I, um, I just hope you can just really have some positive thoughts. When you have those negative thoughts creeping in your head, just wash them away. Don't allow them to come. Uh, I woke up late this morning, thanks of course to our beautiful time change, um, which I just hate this, I, I hate the time change. And um, so I just had to do some self-talk and tell myself it's okay. You know, you lost, you know, it feels like you lose an hour's sleep, but that just means that you get to start a little bit earlier and just move on a little earlier. So. I hope everybody's having a great first work day of the time change. Um, and let me introduce myself for those of you who are new and don't know me. And before I introduce myself though, I'm going to tell you guys what we're talking about today. So today we're going to talk about anger in the workplace and how you can deal with it. I really want to focus with dealing with your own anger first and how you can really manage your own anger in order for it not to spill over into your employees and really just poison your center. So good morning, Kristen. I see you just hopped on. I hope you're doing good on your Monday morning. Um, so anger can be something that really just, it's a poison. It's like a cancer within your, your center. So that's why I wanted to really talk about that today. But let me introduce myself. My name is Evelyn Knight. I am the host of the Child Care Business Coach podcast. I am the CEO and founder of Child Care Business Professionals, which is a company that helps owners and directors find success in uh, child care. Uh, I help you learn how to run a business, basically. So many of us are not business people. We have um, a lot of experience in early childhood education, but we don't know how to run a business. And that's the journey I went through myself, where I almost lost my business because I didn't know how to run a business. Somebody was, I was talking to one of my clients last week and she told me that the reason that I'm different from other coaches is, one of the reasons is because I really infuse my psychology background. My background's in neurological psychology. And so all of the teachings that I bring to the table uh, and the what I've put together, the system I've put in place, which is basically what I teach, is just this is what I've done the, for my center and to create that professional atmosphere and a really high quality child care center that has uh, a wait list of 300 children, right? How did I accomplish that? Well, I teach everybody how to do the same thing I did. And I am an owner, by the way, also currently I own a child care center. And what I've done though, is I've taken the basic business principles I've learned over the years, and I've incorporated my psychology knowledge into how to manage people. And when you understand how people think, right? If you really understand like what is going through your brain, why do they think that way? What leads them to that? And if, even if you can understand before it happens, right? You can solve so many problems. And it goes back to my entire theory in life. One of my big theories of life is to be proactive instead of reactive. I used to be a very reactive person and I had to change that. When I was a reactive person constantly putting out fires, I was not a very successful person. But when I switched the narrative and I became the person who was proactive and stopped fires from happening, did a complete 180 in my business. So that is what I help everybody else do. And I do come really from a psychological basis on how do people think? Understanding the human mind, right? And knowing, well, what makes people tick and going in that direction, which is also why I do these Mindset Mondays. During COVID, I saw just a huge need from our ECE community in that uh, the, mind, the collective mindset was just so depressed. So that's why I like to bring this to you guys, uh, to our industry every Monday. I take the time to write up the curriculum. Same thing on my podcast. I have uh, just different audiences between my podcast and these lives. And, uh, and I do teach different things in both. So listen to the podcast if you haven't. I get much, much more deep into 
business aspect of early childhood education. But I have a lot of free resources that I like to share with the ECE community. I, it's just, I love this community and I do want to give back. So that is why I do what I do. But today we are going to be talking about anger and how it can just be a cancer within your program and how you need to deal with your own anger as well as helping your staff deal with theirs. So first I want to give you guys kind of the background, right? Our anger is not a bad thing. I, that's the first thing I want you guys to understand is anger is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. It actually helps us to stay conscious and aware of things that are going on. It keeps us safe, right? That is when you look at why is anger in our life? Why do we get angry? Well, originally it was put into our minds as like a safety net to help us protect us from things that we need protection from. Uh, but basically what ends up happening is the way we manage our anger can cause more problems for us than the anger itself can solve. So if you manage your anger correctly, anger can actually help you solve problems. It can help you to really sort things out and it can serve to make your life better. It's how we use the anger that becomes the problem, right? So that's really what I wanna to talk to you guys about today is how do you use your anger? How are you letting it serve you? Are, is, are you serving the anger? Or are you making your anger serve you, right? So remember, there is nothing wrong with the emotion of anger. And the same goes for your children in your child care center, okay? I see this all the time with teachers where they just like, oh, he lost his temper. That's okay, but we need to teach them how to manage it so they don't lose their temper. It's okay that they got angry. It's not okay how they reacted to the anger, right? It's the reaction that makes the anger not okay, right? So you really have to check how do you react when you get mad or angry? How does it come out? Same thing with your staff. You need to know and identify that. Our anger is really, how we react comes from our life experiences, okay? Everybody was raised in a different type of environment and everybody saw a different type of reaction. And that reaction is going to influence how you react later in life, right? So you really have to check and see like, how did my family react to anger? Did they scream and fight every time they got angry? There was just yelling and screaming and, you know, throwing things. Or was it a calm, let's talk about this, let's sit down, let's sort things out. How was anger dealt with? Maybe it was passive aggressive right? Maybe it wasn't even, there was no yelling or screaming. There was no nice, calm conversation either, but it became these passive aggressive manipulation tools in order to get your way, right? So really think about like, how did your family deal with their anger? I was running very late this morning, guys. So um, how did your family deal with their own anger? And how can you make sure that you break those generational bonds, right? And start having a different narrative in how you deal with your anger. Uh, sometimes though, if you look at your family life, you might see that you took an opposite direction, right? So let's say for example, your family was one that just lashed out in anger. They were hitting, uh, you know, you might've gotten spanked really harshly. They might've been yelling and you might find now that you internalize your anger and you become really quiet and withdrawn, right? That is a product of the environment you were brought up in. Um, so you can intentionally change that. You might bottle up all your anger inside until you blow up. And it could take years. Sometimes it takes years to blow up. And I'll tell you guys a story before I really started working on this stuff, uh, like from a leadership perspective, I had a situation in my center where I had an employee, she was a wonderful employee. And, but she went through a season that wasn't so wonderful and she was really burning out. I could tell she was burning out, but instead of how, like stepping in to help her deal with the burnout, I was getting really mad and my anger was just escalating, but I was bottling up. I wasn't saying anything. And that was just always me. I would bottle up my anger. It wouldn't come out. 
and I just let it fester and fester until I blew up, right? So one day um, I had hired a music instructor to come in and the two women did not get along at all. And so the music instructor kept coming to me and complaining that, you know, the teacher isn't helping, she's not doing stuff, I don't know what to do. So I just was getting really upset. And I mean, this was a great program for the children, right? And I'm always about like, this is for the children. And one of the things that gets under my skin is when the adults in the room, which happens a lot, forget that this is about the children. I mean, there's a lot of things that I honestly don't care if you don't like it. If it's good for the children and if it's what's best for the children, then we as adults, we need to just deal with it, right? We need to get over ourselves, which is what it really is. We need to get over ourselves. Well, this particular teacher didn't like a music teacher coming into her classroom and having that time. And she was having a very hard time getting over herself. And so one day um, I was watching the video of the interaction and I could see that the teacher literally just left this music teacher. She hung around to dry. She did. She was definitely in the wrong in the situation, um, which I could have helped and I could have fixed. So I called the teacher into my office to have a conference with her about it, right? And just basically to reprimand her instead of to coach her, I called her to reprimand her. And I was angry. I watched the video, called her in. I was, I was really angry. And I remember this like escalated. So we got to this point where I could tell this girl's burning out. She's not doing what's best for the children anymore. She used to be one of my best teachers of all time. She'd worked for me for about five years. And now I see her not putting the needs of the children first. So I immediately called her in and she, I asked her, you know, what's going, I had her show the video and I said, what's going on? Why are you treating this woman this way? And she said, because she wore blue today. And I just lost it. When she said that to me, uh, I just lost it. And I basically told her that she doesn't care about the children. And I told, I kicked her out of my building. I said, get out of here. I mean, and I yelled at her. I, I lost it. I told her to get out of my building, that um, she was a horrible teacher. And I mean, I said things that you can't take back and you can't change. That is stuff you cannot change and you can never take it back, right? So I dealt with this teacher during a time that I was escalated and angry. And I do get escalated and angry a lot. It's just, I, I am a hot-blooded person, I do. The problem isn't my anger. I was correct in being angry at that moment, right? What she did, she was not putting the children first. I was correct in getting angry. Where I was wrong is I dealt with her while I was still angry. I dealt with her at an escalated spot. With children, it's the same thing. For those of you guys who know how to deal with your children's behaviors, you know you cannot get through to a child when they are escalated. Right. You see, we I mean, if you've been to trainings, we've all seen those graphs where it's like when a child is happy, 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 then they start to escalate then they get to that top part and then they go back down, they deescalate and they're happy, happy, happy. And it'll show you when do you deal with a child and you always deal with them when they're down here, maybe when they're starting to escalate, but you never, ever deal with it when they're escalated. Never. Right. And just like an adult, you cannot get through to an adult. You cannot deal with with an escalated adult, right? When they start coming down and they're almost back down to that valley, you can start dealing with them again. You can start getting through to them again. It is just humans, right? Adult or child, you are wasting your breath when you're trying to get through to somebody at an escalated state, okay? And we need to recognize when we are at escalated states and we do not want to deal with anybody or any issue when we are at an escalated state. Right. You want to make sure that you are either at before or after before you take action. So in a situation like that, I now would not deal with the employee until I knew I was calm and collected and I was good. And I would not absolutely not deal with her until the next day at this point. And sometimes I needed to let it go for two days. Uh, one of the things Brandy does now, which is awesome, is when she gets escalated, she goes for a walk. Sometimes she'll go for a mile right but she leaves the program she actually leaves our center and she'll go for a walk sometimes it's just a block but she knows she needs to disconnect herself 
from our center completely. So she actually leaves the property, walks around the block a couple times. Sometimes she'll go farther, but she knows when she gets Escalade, she has to get off the property. That way she doesn't immediately deal with the situation. So dealing with the anger is just how you deal with it is so very important and recognizing how do you respond to anger, right? And waiting, do not ever, it's, it's just always a bad idea to respond out of anger. Wait for yourself to leave that escalated portion and go down, right? Um, there's so many techniques that you can do, but self-awareness is very, very important. So what I really want you guys to think about is, um, are you even aware of your emotions and how you deal with your anger? Do you lash out? Do you become passive aggressive? Take some time to journal and figure out how do you deal with your anger? How do you release it? Are you bottling it all in? Because that is very, very dangerous too. I mean, people think that you're pretty even keeled, but really people who bottle their anger in will blow up eventually. It's going to come out. It's one of those emotions that it's going to need to come out. It will come out. So think about that and how do you deal with it and stop it from ha happening. What I really don't want you to do is get into arguing matches. As a leader, you are already the top of the food chain, right? You do not need to be engaging in any arguments ever with your staff. Never. It's never necessary to argue with your staff. You are already at the top of the food chain, right? So it's also very important for you to know, do you engage in arguments? When you do engage in an argument, how do you engage? It's sometimes you may not even recognize at the moment that you're engaging in an argument. So you really need to think about and make yourself aware like, oh, wait a second, we're arguing. And if you do get into an argument, it is okay to say, I'm not gonna argue with you. We're not going to deal with the situation right now. You're obviously escalated. I'm becoming escalated. I will not engage in an argument, so we will deal with this later. And then walk away. You know, even if it has to be until the next day, uh, there's a lot of situations that I will deal with on a Friday when I know the person that I'm going to have to deal with is going to get angry, right? When you know you're going to deal with an escalated person. I mean, it's as management, as a leader, it is inevitable. We are going to make people angry. We are going to get into that position. We, It's our job. If you're not making people angry, you're not doing your job. I can tell you that right now. And so what I do a lot of times is I'll wait till the last hour of the shift on a Friday. And that's when you deal with it. That way they have the, yes, Brandy says process, process, process. That way they have the weekend to process it. They have the weekend to just calm down and kind of get over it, right? So that's why we deal with things on Fridays. And that way by Monday, things are a little bit more settled down. You have that weekend to think it through and it helps you to settle down a little bit. So that's something just not allowing and not allowing yourself to engage really just and i know it is so hard good morning alana i know it's so hard sometimes to not allow yourself to engage but you are already the top of the food chain you're already the leader why do you need to engage in anger why do you need to prove something i mean arguments are really just to prove who's right and wrong right and a lot of times people get so fixated on being right that the issue doesn't even matter. All they're arguing about is I'm right, period, right? And now the issue becomes a non-issue because the argument is lost on who is right instead of what is right. So that's also something to really pay attention to as a leader. If you always have to be right, you really need to question yourself and you really need to look at why, what is it within me that feels like I always have to be right? Because sometimes we are wrong. Sometimes we have to just step back and say, oh, I'm sorry, I was wrong, you're right. And it does take a much bigger person who has just better leadership skills to be able to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And I can guarantee you, when you can admit that you're wrong and you don't always have to be right, you're gonna gain so much more respect out of the people around you. They're going to want to follow you more. And that's, again, how you're going to have that loyal staff that sticks with you because you're open to hearing them. You're open to understanding that sometimes you are wrong. We are not perfect, right? None of us are perfect. Until the day that you are perfect, you're going to be wrong sometimes. And since none of us will really ever achieve perfection, then we're going to be wrong. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It takes a really big person to admit that. So... 
just watching your own anger in that situation too and just knowing why am I arguing? Why am I angry? Is it really because I'm wrong here? And just being able to swallow your pride is one of the best traits a leader can have, right? It's I was actually talking to my son about this yesterday. One of the best human traits, period. It will strengthen your relationships. It will just um, really help you to avoid a lot of heartache in life, just being able to swallow your own pride. It, I've uh, learned through life that when I step back and ask myself, is my pride really worth this? You know, is my pride really worth hurting this relationship forever? Is it really worth losing what I'm about to lose because I'm too prideful? It really does help to just step back and ask yourself that because um, I see a lot of people who've lost a lot of good relationships just because they can't swallow their own pride. So that is, pride is a huge fuel to your anger. So understanding where is my anger coming from? How do I respond? You know, and how should I respond? And the best thing you guys is to just have calm conversations. In the beginning, it is hard. So you might want to write out notes and a script, right? Uh, that's something that we've done and just write up your talking points and just stick to it. When you feel yourself going away from that script, you want to come back to the script. So I also want to clarify something I just said a little bit earlier too, that some of you might just be like, what is she talking about? Why would a good leader make people angry, right? Um, so, and I just said that you're not doing your job if you're not making people angry. Well, the reason I say that is because people are going to make mistakes, right? And Brandy knows this, we talk about it a lot where, you know, sometimes you're not going to be the popular one. They're going to use their cell phones in the classrooms. They're going to come in late. They're going to try and call in excessively. Parents are going to try not to pay their bill. Uh, they might treat your teachers badly, right? So there are times that you're going to have to confront people and you're going to basically have to put a mirror in front of people. Nobody, nobody likes having a mirror shown in their face. And when we have to do that as leaders, it makes them angry. Their natural response is going to be anger, right? Some of them cry, some of them get really, really upset about it and just start crying. But most of your employees probably aren't going to have the emotional maturity to step back, take accountability immediately. It's, it, they will eventually, right? But your immediate on the spot reaction is usually going to be an extreme emotion. It's going to be anger, sadness, regret, something, right? But they're not immediately going to be able to draw them back in, themselves in, and they're not going to immediately be able to just, yes, you're right, I was wrong. And if they do, that is a keeper. I can tell you right now, if you have an employee who can take responsibility on the spot, not let their emotions really take control of them, and they are authentic, they're not just placating you. They are authentic. That employee is an employee you want to fight for and keep for a very, very long time. That shows some very mature personality traits, and those are one of the hardest leadership traits to get to. So if you have one of those employees that can respond to constructive criticism or even just being reprimanded very, very well without getting escalated, they're probably a golden employee. So, and you probably don't see that very often because it's just not natural human nature to be able to respond in that manner. We do get escalated and there's nothing wrong with that. You guys just remember when your employees get angry and sad and whatever, there's nothing wrong with that. It is natural human behavior. The other thing I want you to remember is you are not responsible for your employees' emotions. Yes, you're going to make them angry. Yes, you're going to make them sad. Yes, you're going to hurt feelings sometimes. That is not your responsibility. That is their responsibility. It is how they think. Their brain is the one making them angry. Their brain is the one making them sad, right? It's the thoughts coming into their mind that are making them feel that way. It's not you. So you are not responsible for how somebody emotionally responds to you. You are responsible for your own emotions and your own thoughts and your own responses but their actions are responsible for how they feel now, right? Their thoughts are responsible for their feelings. You would not have to do your job if they hadn't done something, right? And there's going to be times where it happens, but you just have to re really watch how you respond. And you have to really make sure that you are not 
stopping yourself from taking action because you're so afraid of their emotional response. You cannot fear their emotional response. You are not responsible for it. You did not cause it. They caused it. Their minds caused it. Our emotions are caused by our thoughts. How we think causes our emotions. You and I can go into the exact same situation and have a totally different interpretation of that situation and a totally different response to the situation. When we do go into those situations and we have those different responses, we just um, need to really kind of pull ourselves back and look at the perspective. If my perspective is different than yours, I might think this is a great situation and these people are being wonderful and you might think they're being passive aggressive and just placating you and it may make you really angry, right? It's just our perspectives, our thoughts cause our emotions and how we respond. So really having that self-awareness and being really secure and just know, just think about that. Just I may be wrong here, right? We I may be misinterpreting the situation might help you also to control your anger. So for today, what I want you really to take away from this is to never act out of anger. Always give yourself time to process. Find some technique like my girls do. I love that they go for that walk around the block before they respond to anger. Um, don't be afraid of your anger. There's nothing wrong with being angry. There is nothing wrong with it. You just have to watch how you respond. Anger is not a bad emotion. Your response is what makes it bad, right? Help control the anger within your center. Do not engage with employees when you're angry and do not engage in arguments. You are above that, right? You don't argue with your staff. And also do not allow other people's emotions to control how you respond and you are not responsible for their emotions. So I hope everybody has a beautiful week. And if, as always, if you guys need anything, feel free to reach out to me. And if you're interested in my coaching program, please feel free to send me a message. I would love to chat and set up a time to talk to you. Have a great week, everybody.